Teachers of Reddit, what is the worst thing you've seen a parent do to their child that either made you want to or did make you call Child Protective Services? Story 1. About five years ago in my 10th grade English class, one of the best students I've ever had the honor of teaching came to class horribly roughed up. He was over an hour early and just slowly walked to his seat and sat there quietly. I sat next to him, begging him to tell me what happened. He did, but I wish he hadn't. His dad found out that my student was gay decided that no son of his would be or could be gay. So he decided to rough up the gayness out of him. I didn't let him finish. I didn't want to know what else he had endured. I called the cops. An ambulance was sent for my student. They found the dad at work. He was an elementary school teacher, teaching his class like it was just another normal Monday. I took everything I had to keep from going there and running that a-hole over with my car. Thankfully, his mom wasn't as controlled as I was. She tried ending her husband at the police station. It literally took four cops to get her off of him. She's about 5'2", 90 to 100 pounds. He's about 6'2", and 250 pounds. And she messed him up. And after she walked out of that station, she went home and burned every single one of his things in the fireplace. Glad to say my student made a full recovery. He, along with his mom and siblings, spent all the holidays with us. Glad this had a happy ending. He got lucky. That's all he got from his wife. He won't have as much fun in prison, if you know what I mean. Story 2. Now I'm not a teacher, but a parent. While I was waiting for my turn to talk to the teacher during the parent-teacher conference, this mother came out yelling at her kid. You should have practiced your spelling. You'll never be as successful as I am. You'll never accomplish anything in your life. When we get home, you'll practice your spell and math until you get the best grades in the class. I will not accept you being a waste of my time and money. Not really threatening, but more scary and verbally ab Still made me a bit mad to see. Story 3. In high school, I dated a girl who came from a seriously messed up household. Mom had been cheating on the dad for years, dad got fired for being drunk at work, and at the time, mom decided to let him know she'd been cheating and left him. B -b 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 bonus round. The house they lived in for 15 years was owned by mom's parents, who decided at the same time they wanted to sell it so they could buy an RV and tour the country. So mom left a drunkard, jobless dad with a teenage daughter and a severely mentally disabled son, facing eviction within a few months. Me and my girlfriend drove through town after school looking for houses and eventually found one. She pushed her drunk dad through the viewing process. She, at age 15, I was 16 and totally alien to all of this, figured out how to apply for housing benefits. And they got the house. Mom kept popping back in, at one point chasing the disabled son around the house with a kitchen knife. He routinely showed up to school covered in bruises and cuts. CPS was called. But since enough boxes weren't checked upon the parent notified in advance home visits, nothing could be done. Dad ended up reconnecting with a cousin of his, who introduced him to H. My girlfriend started partying hard to cope with it all, and I couldn't take her cheating on me with numerous guys, so I broke it off. The whole system was so badly messed up that I don't even want to see how she is nowadays, on social media or anything. I've already got a pretty good idea of what the poverty machine tends to spit out. Trust me when I say you're doing the right thing not knowing. It's horrible, but sometimes you just can't save everyone. Good on you, dude. That was rough, but you did and are doing the right thing in every aspect. Story 4. I will lead with I'm not a teacher. However, I've had to report to CPS. A sweet 14-year-old joined a server I'm in on Discord. I also happened to be a moderator, and immediately we couldn't help but find her to be a refreshing change in company. She's passionate about animals, right? Basically teaching herself as her mom is doing her best but still struggling and she's at home. But the more she talked about her mom, the more alarmed her mod team got. She was jaundiced, losing weight no matter what she ate, had constant stomach pain, and despite all those alarming symptoms, her mom refused to even take her to a GP. Her mother would scream at her if she asked for help with school things, she was severely stunted in education, and she was regularly told she was useless and couldn't do anything. The last straw was when she finally admitted she was physically hurt as we suspected, including a chair being thrown at her head. Despite most of us being under 25 and struggling ourselves, we refused to leave a kid unsupervised in that position. After a long, serious conversation about what the symptoms in her health could mean, the escalation in physical mistreatment and the obvious assistance her mom needed, I got the necessary information for the CPS report and filed it immediately. In two days, the agent arrived, assessed the situation, and were able to get some sense into the mother. The 14-year-old is now getting help with school, going to a specialist children's hospital, and the mom is working to get her own issues under control with aid while CPS makes sure everything is going right. Sometimes the solution isn't removing the kid. Sometimes it's assisting the parent. Mistreatment is always mistreatment, but it isn't always intentional. When it isn't intentional, it often alarms the parent to realize what they've done. As a child from that situation, with loving but also parents who didn't know better, I have been determined to help others in that situation. Huh, so was throwing the chair at her head also unintentional? Hey there, 
If you haven't heard already, a few friends and I recently launched Rufus Rugs, your go-to destination for premium custom hand-tufted rugs. Looking to add a touch of your favorite anime like Nantrito to your space? We've got you covered. Or perhaps you're a die-hard Pokemon guy and want bus toys showcased for everyone to admire. No matter your style, we can bring your vision to life. Click the first link in the description to explore more. Story 5 I don't know if this counts, but I called the CPS for my sisters and I. We were regularly heard for failing any tests. We were sitting at a desk and when we didn't answer a question right, we were punched, hair pulled, slammed into the desk and pinched. Our parents heard us really often and sometimes for no reason. Once, I was sweeping when she told me to, and I was scared because she was going one by one to each of my sisters to hurt them, and I heard the screaming get closer. I got frantic and stopped because the manhandling was inevitable. She just started kicking when she pushed me to the floor. The breaking point was when she tried to drown my sister in the bathtub. I told my counselor, who wrote down everything in the report, completely everything. I desperately asked to go into foster care. Months later, about six to seven months, a woman came to talk to me. She told me to go to the front and the receptionist whispered, your caseworker is in the room to the right. CEPS interviewed me and her face was in shock. She apologized for taking so long and said, we go to those who can't speak for themselves first. Then she made one home visit. My sisters were too scared to say anything and I told her, please don't give up. They're too scared to say anything because my parents are listening in the other room. She nodded and left. Again, months later, I came home from a friend's and my mom said CPS gave her an entire copy of the report I gave to them. I've never seen her more angry. I thought she was bluffing and said, no, I didn't. And she said the date, time, and what I said in the report. I told my counselor and she said, well, I called CPS and they said they didn't do that. So yeah, it just went on. To this day, my stomach curdles at the thought of why and how CPS could just do nothing. Just one home visit and gone. Damn, that sounds horrible. You were definitely failed by so many people. Things will get better in time. Story 6. I work in daycare and early learning. There's two brothers. One is in the two's room, the other pre-K. I swear their mother doesn't want them. The main thing that sets me off is she only gives one hug and kiss, and refuses to give them any more if they wanted, like it's a punishment. The oldest boy wouldn't even be accompanied by her to go into the class to drop him off. She opens the door, lightly shoves him in, and says a quick bye. And no, she's not late for work. With little brother, she'll only come in only because he'll refuse to walk himself in. Give the worst bye and literally walk around cubbies or the shelf to circle around him and bolt out the door. She'll sneak out when he's not paying attention. Their dad passed away about eight months ago. And mom had a new girlfriend almost immediately. We think mom was super dismissive about their dad's death too. They never talked about it, but for one day. Not that it really means anything. But I don't think the boys ever got to properly mourn. One time, they went to a road trip to New York. Drove all the way back and the morning they got to town brought them into school. They didn't stop at home to change or anything. Poor kids were still asleep. The youngest was so soiled his diaper could burst and both were in dirty pajamas that were at least a day old. And they both just overall had poor hygiene. If that was me... I would have taken that diaper and rubbed it all over her head, then call CPS. If you don't want a dirty diaper on your head, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Back to the video. Story 7. Not me, but a friend of mine used to teach at a religious school. She was not a follower of the same religion, but most, if not all, of the teachers, students, and staff were. Won't name the religion, but I guess one of her kids was showing up to school with marks in his body. When she asked him about them, he said his parents would hit him when he misbehaved. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but it didn't look good. The friends went to the principal of the school and told her what the child had said. The principal swept it under the rug and told her it was none of her business and to stay out of it. The kid kept showing up with marks, so when there was a parent-teacher conference, she asked the parents about it. They proceeded to talk to the principal and try to get her fired from the school. She then got reprimanded for intervening and didn't work there for too long after that. I was working with her at the time at another job, when she'd tell me what was going on when we had shifts together. I'm pretty sure she ended up calling CPS and they investigated it, not sure of the outcome religious but put their kids through all that? Jesus disapproves of you. Story 8. My mom is a second grade teacher and she told me this story. There's nothing really she can report to CPS yet, but she said she's keeping her eye out. Kid has some digestive issues. My mom didn't say if he has a diagnosis or not, so his mom is careful about what he eats. After a really painful episode, his mom has decided that he's no longer allowed to eat anything provided by the school. Okay, that's understandable. It's possible he has some undiagnosed allergy or whatever so she wants to keep a close eye on what he eats. Except, one day after this declaration, the mom has already emailed my mom, the principal, pretty much everyone in the front office at the school about this new rule. She forgets to send a snack or lunch. My mom called her and told her she either had to drop off lunch or she'll send him home. But seriously? You say he can't have anything provided by the school but don't give him any food from home? The kid is eight. He needs to eat. My mom is going to continue watching this family and report if there's anything that can be reported. 
kids his age need to eat a lot. When I was eight, my stomach felt like a black hole. I'd eat anything, except for Brussels sprouts. Nasty. Story 9. My mom was a primary school teacher here in the UK. She worked at a very multicultural school in the suburbs of London and had a real mix of kids and parents who, for the most part, were absolutely lovely. I used to love going in to help them with classes. To give a bit more context, this was about 10 years ago now, and all the kids changed in the same room for PE. I think this may have changed now. After one school break, a lot of the kids started picking on one girl for smelling funny, which my mom initially ignored. But in one of these PE changes, her and the teaching assistant noticed it too. After a drawn-out, very sensitive investigation, they discovered one of the girls had been subject to female circumcision. Now totally legal in the UK. Mom went straight to the head and the issue did go further. But tragically, the damage is already done in this sort of case, and I don't think anyone was ever reprimanded. I remember mom coming home so, so angry about the whole thing. And then she still had to act professionally with these crazy parents at parent evenings and school events, etc. Thankfully, there has since been a lot more media coverage in this form of maltreatment, and the police and social services, a version of child protection, have cracked down. But it definitely still happens. It's the sort of crime that's a one-off and hard to predict before it happens. Story 10. I was teaching a winter vacation class for some of my elementary students. It's meant to be a more fun version of the class that also gives a little boost in knowledge. This is a voluntary class that students sign up for. This time, I happen to have a group of only low-level students. I was trying to be extra nice and encouraging to them during the week of classes so they could be more excited and feel good about themselves. There was one boy who was one of the lowest-level students in his class and rarely was able to put his hand up and answer questions. On this day, he was actively participating a lot and was being very cheerful, so I felt proud of him. At the end of the class, I went over to tell him what a good job he did that day and to pat him on the back. And as my hand got closer to him, he flinched and instinctively moved his arms to block his face. I was shocked, but he just laughed and casually said, I thought you were going to hit me. Of course, I told him that I wasn't going to and that he did really well that day. Unfortunately, I don't really have the power to go deeper into what's caused him to be that way. I just try to be really nice to him when he's in my class and help him out when he's struggling with the work so he's not so far behind the other kids. Story 11 this is my stepdaughter's story. I met my now husband when his daughter was only a few months old. He and his ex were toxic for each other, constantly fighting to the point where they both ended up in jail for domestic violence. Thankfully, that was cleared from my husband's record recently. Anyway, once his ex found out he and I were dating, she immediately used their daughter as a weapon. He wasn't allowed to see her if he was with me. She manipulated him enough to break up with me, so he pretended to want to be with his ex, just to stay in his daughter's life. He was young, 25 and new to being a parent, so didn't know of other options. The plan obviously didn't go well. After a month or so, he left her again, came back to me. And we started the process of going to court to get visitation. By the time she was two, we were celebrating her birthday at her house with a full visitation schedule. During that time, his ex had moved five times with different boyfriends and could keep a job. Her daughter has a disability, but her mother missed so many therapy appointments that she was literally kicked out of the hospital. Every time my stepdaughter would come to visit, she was in ill-fitting dirty clothes, dirty diapers, which caused many rashes, matted hair, and shoes that never fit. She didn't learn to walk until she was nearly three because her mother never tried to help her. She was supposed to wear arm splints for a disability, but her mom claimed her daughter would just take them off, so she stopped trying. The breaking point was when we found out she had hurt her boyfriend's daughter in anger. She left bruises around her neck and tried to cover it up by sending her to school in a turtleneck. In summer, thankfully her teacher noticed the irregularity and saw the bruising and quickly called CPS. She was taken to court and got off with a minor domestic felony and only got probation, which was ridiculous. So my husband and I went back to court to get full custody. All the evidence against her mom made the decision easy. We were awarded custody in 2016, just before my stepdaughter turned four. Her mom hadn't enrolled her in preschool because she felt it would be just boring for her daughter. I changed that right away. She started preschool mid-year and instantly started excelling socially and academically. Since then, her mom has gone through another three boyfriends. Another five houses, she moved in with a friend after her ex kicked her out for what she did to his daughter. And after that, only her parents would take her in. She lost custody of her old daughter, still doesn't have a job, and had another freaking kid who was being raised by a guy who isn't the kid's father. I'm betting her parents would kick her out too. Then it would be the streets for her. Story 12. Not a teacher, but it's school-related, and it resulted in something happening. And not CPS, as it's in the UK. Every year, our school had a barbecue before it finished for the summer. It was always a Friday night. The school kitchen staff were manning the barbecue, and it was at a site in a country park next to a river. Usually, it was a night of perfect weather. Kids being kids, invariably some, or all of us, would end up in the river at some point. It just became a thing. To the point where the school would advise parents in the note that they should bring along towels, spare clothes, etc. And the school would bring along spare clothes from unclaimed lost property. There was a kid in my year who had a younger brother two years below. 
As kids, all we knew was their dad wasn't around much, and that was it. One year, their dad was there. It was a warm night, and pretty much all the kids were kicking about in the river. The kid's younger brother ends up in the river proper and somehow loses a trainer, which floats off downstream. The reaction seemed completely irrational. The younger brother starts having a meltdown. The older brother desperately tried to calm him down. The mother appears and starts yelling, What have you done? Then the dad appears, absolute beetroot red, and sprinting from the barbecue site towards these kids. A few of the parents obviously knew the situation and were not letting anything happen. It took two other dads and one of the teachers to hold back this guy from hurting a six-year-old kid in front of a good portion of the school. Teachers and other parents tried to shield the rest of the kids from it, but I can remember the dad storming off with his t-shirt ripped open. Kids weren't back in school before summer, there was only one week to go, and we were told by our teacher that we shouldn't talk about it with them when we saw them. The dad was never seen again. It was only a few years later when I was talking to my parents about the barbecue that they said the police had been called and picked the dad up from the park, and he'd been jailed for attacking one of them when he was being lifted. The eight-year-old me didn't quite take in what was happening at the time. It was only after speaking to my folks about it that things fell into place as to why the dad was rarely around. My most vivid memory of the evening was seeing the older brother, who was nine years old at the most, physically putting himself in between his dad and his brother whilst, I assume, preparing to take the punishment for doing so. Story 13. Had a student, we'll call her Tracy, who would have episodes of mass hysteria if she found out the admin or myself was contacting her mom for negative behavior. I'm talking screaming, yelling, cursing, grabbing a hold of adult shirts, kicking, punching, you name it. Mom openly stated that she whoops her kid, but not to the point that it leaves a mark, and I've never seen one on her, but no wonder her child would react hysterically. One particular instance, after returning to the classroom for lunch, Tracy found out through another student that administration was calling her mom for something she did in the cafeteria. So Tracy begins screaming and destroying her classroom, ripping posters off the wall, flipping desks, throwing books from the library around the room, etc., as well as hitting myself and other teachers who were trying to intervene. This goes on for 10 to 15 minutes. Finally, mom shows up and Tracy begins to direct her screaming at mom, to which her mom grabbed her by the collar of her shirt and took her to the ground, hitting a few chairs and a table on the way down, screaming back at her, You will not yell at me and disrespect me! Mom is now literally on top of this child and pinning her down while the child is screaming, I'm hot! I'm hot! And the mom is trying to tell her that she's hot because she's on top of her and that she needs to stop screaming for her to get up off her. Finally, the situation is de-escalated and we're back to civility after five minutes of this mayhem. Tracy is very small for her age. Mom isn't huge, but is at least double, maybe triple her size. So while all this is happening, the vice principal and I are staring back and forth at each other and the mom. And we're thinking, is this the crossing line? Should we intervene? Maybe there's a method to this madness the mom is doing? And we were thinking this because the mom wasn't hitting Tracy and she wasn't verbally abusing her either. She took her to the ground and was just on top of her. I'm not an expert, I don't have kids, but I would like to think that I wouldn't react that way to my kid if he or she was behaving that way. But as teachers, especially in certain low-income areas and or who teach students with social and emotional disorders, we frequently have situations like this one where you have to really analyze and determine, is this truly worth calling CPS or not? Is this parent bad or just at a loss and not sure what to do to help his or her child? If you made it this far, I hope you liked the video. And if you did, I know you like. CPS workers, what was the worst case you've seen? You will not believe story three. Make sure to check it out. See you on that video.